What's up everybody? I'm sitting at this red light here, red, uh, getting ready to turn. We're going on a no cooling call. Just a little background about it before I get there. Uh, it's a guy that um, his wife passed away during COVID and he's got some mental issues, I think from seizures and stuff. So a friend of his, which is a friend and business associate of mine, we do some business together, asked me to go look because he went, the, the guy that I know checks up on this guy. And he went over there the other day and noticed the, the house was extremely hot. And he's like, man, why is it so hot in here? And the, the guy with the mental issues was like, oh, my AC doesn't work. So he called me up and he was like, look, dude, go over there and fix that dude's AC and just send me the bill. So we're going to go over there and hopefully it's something easy for him. And my buddy's going to pay for it. And hopefully we can get this poor guy some AC. Nobody's coming to the door right now and I'm trying to get a hold of my buddy, but look at the mess I've got to work with. I was going to see if it was just a capacitor or something. Good Lord. There is all kind of shit. just blew off my head oh man look at the electrical oh no there's the where's the okay the disconnect is back there there's a windy unit laying right here ICP. Actually, no, this is a carrier. This is a true carrier. You see that CA? That's true carrier. It's a three ton. Look at this. Look at this low voltage. Those wires are naked. I bet you, I bet you we have a burnt fuse inside. Yep, there's red and there's white. This is a mess. No caps on the uh, on the Schraders. We have a rusted out dryer. Grass hasn't been cut back here in God knows how long. But he did say after his wife died, he my buddy said that he pretty much did let everything go, and you know he quit. His wife took care of that. You know, she would hire people to come landscape and all that. And she's, you know, trying to prop that right there for you. I'm going to see if there's even any refrigerant in this machine before I go any further. It's kind of windy out here. Somebody in Denham Springs, Louisiana, put this unit in. That's a long way from here. Oh, yep, we got refrigerant. So... Let me check the high side, make sure there's actually some liquid in there. Yeah, we got refrigerant. It doesn't sound like, it seems like the high side should be putting out more than that, but I'd re I really need to get inside because I really, really think we're gonna have a burnt fuse wires right here. Oh. Ah. I see, said the blind man. To his deaf friend who said, I heard that. I'm pretty confident we're going to have a burnt fuse or a transformer. Hopefully there's a fuse on the system. All right, I'm going to have to get in the house. Let me try to make some phone calls and get a hold of some people. All right, so we have a carrier three ton 
This is a two-story house with a three-ton machine with a so-called zoning system. You can see the bypass duct. I think they have both zones tied together. This air handler has one screw in it. And I'm guessing it's probably all because of that. Because of that situation outside that blew the fuse. Man, I bet you. God, this system has been abandoned. <clears throat> There's a fuse. Look at that. The heater, those relays are broken. I can't. Those fuses are so hard to see. Actually, the fuse is good. Fuse is good. I'm, I'm, we may not have no power coming here. See, it's got some rust. Let me get a better connection. Yeah, we got it. Okay, let's see if the breakers are any good on the back side of them. Yep. Yep. Okay. So now what we'll have to do is test the transformer. Ah, looks like the transformer's been replaced. All right, guys, I'm going to have to put y'all down so I can be careful and get in here. Well, somebody's definitely been fooling with this system. Transformer's good. The fuse is good. The secondary transformer that powers the zone board was, was unhooked. It's good, but it wasn't hooked up to the zone board. So I hooked it up to the zone board. The zone board came on. The thermostats are now on. But they are only using the downstairs thermostat. They have both thermostats tied in to the same zone and the bypass, uh, I think stays closed. No, the bypass doesn't even have a damper on it. It doesn't look like, but, um, both zones are working off of one thermostat. So the thermostat's in time delay right now. So I'm waiting for it to come out of time delay. See if I can hear refrigerant flowing through these lines and see if this X13 blower motor starts up. This man hasn't had air in a while. Somebody's been fooling with this system. I mean, the uh, there's the transformer. These are the two wires that power the zone board. And they run through here and they come out uh, right here. They were sitting over here just hanging. So... And see, every time I move, I got a bad connection on that zone board because every time I move it, I lose power. <clears throat> I should just eliminate this shit, but I can't. Yep, there's my loose connection right there. I'm going to have to put y'all down. Here. All right, guys, I got this machine running. Basically, they have... Both zones wired up to the upstairs thermostat, which is right here. And if you look right there, you can see the staircase going, I hope you can, going downstairs. But they have both zones wired up to the thermostat, which is right around that corner. It had dead batteries. It does not even have a common on it. It's one of them little cheap Honeywells. 
Uh, it needs a new heat kit, which is, this is a 15 kW. It needs a blower wheel. I don't know if y'all can hear that noise. It, need, it definitely needs a blower wheel, but I'm gonna put the cover back on it and go turn the condenser on and see what the refrigerant pressures look like. All right, it's alive. My handy dandy kit. See, I was able to do this whole job with just them three tools. Let's see what kind of Freon's in this thing. Is it 410? Yep, it's 410. All right, I'm gonna put some gauges on it. Doesn't feel like it's blowing very warm air at all. Feels like it's blowing cold. So it probably needs Freon. Probably needs a coil. And I don't know if my guy's gonna pay for all that, but we're gonna give him the full diagnosis. All right, so I got about 103 PSI over 225 and about six and a half amps. So she's pumping. I, at first, I didn't think the compressor was pumping, but she's definitely pumping. So I gotta call my guy and see if he wants me to throw a little gas in it and see if he wants to put a blower wheel on it. And uh, you know, that'd be the cheapest thing we can do here. This is a, I can't remember on carrier. Uh, it's either a 2012 or 2011. I think, I, I can't remember if it's the first two, that's the year or the second or three and four, but it's one of the two. It's a 13 sear three ton and it is 410A. So I gotta make a phone call and get approval on, uh, shit, probably just need about a pound of gas on this thing and she'll be good. All right. We're back at this so-called zoning system and I don't know a lot about zoning, but I know that this ain't right. I got the blower wheel in. So we're going to change that and they want to abandon the zoning. I'm not gonna open up the bypass or nothing. I'm going to simply make sure that both zone dampers are calling at the same time. All right, we brought the blower assembly down. I was gonna try to do it in the attic, but there's just too much rust and I'm gonna have to use the jack of all sprays and some sandpaper. So first thing I'm gonna do is loosen these up. I believe that's a 7 sixteenths and would you look at that? My 7 16 chuck is gone. Oh wait, that might be 3 8 Hopefully it's 3 8 Nope. No, that's a 7 16 right there. Okay, I just need an extension. with one hand so I can get y'all some decent film. Turn it over. Look at that rust. Ooh, this one's gonna be fun. A lot of guys just loosen them. I pull them all the way out because I like to get some spray in there. Try to tap it down. Try to. I may have moved a little bit.
gonna sand it down and then put some spray on it. So I'm letting that penetrating oil, that jack of all sprays soak in there. I really like it because of the way it foams up like that. And if I can break that shaft loose, if I can get it to spin, I can get it out of there. The reason I take the set screw out is because I actually spray some in, in there, in the hole. But this thing has a lot of rust on it, but I'm gonna see if I can break it free. All right, guys. So we're on the way to pick up a fan blade puller. Um, I had one, but it broke. It was a cheap one. It was that cheap aluminum one. You know, I, I'm like Ted. I never really carry one on the truck because normally I don't need one. But this thing is, uh, is just seized so bad. There's, I can't get it off. I mean, I have sprayed it, I've sanded it. I've, I've used wire brushes, uh, wire brushes that go on your drill. I mean, I got the shaft clean, but I can't get the hub to move down to get that clean surface. I think I might've got it to move down, but I've got it clean and I've, and I've pen put penetrating all, all over it. But I can't get this thing to budge. I can't get the I can't get the shaft to spin in the hub to break free. So it's gonna take a puller. Um, it's not often that I run into one that I need a puller. But when I pulled it out of the air handler and I saw how rusted it was, I think if Ted ever ran into one as rusted as this one is, he would have to whip out a puller too. But when I saw how rusted the shaft was, I knew, I, I, I said, I'll go outside and give it a shot, but probably gonna have to go buy a puller. So I'm headed over to Baker Distributing. Today's Good Friday. We didn't have any plans today. We normally do have plans on Good Friday. We normally have a big crawfish thing with the family, but we're doing it tomorrow, which actually worked out because this is not the only call that I had come in today. Well, and then I'm finishing this one from, you know, the other day as, you know, earlier in the video. So this one's gonna definitely take a puller, so we're gonna go get one, and Baker has the real good pullers. So hopefully the puller will get it out. All right, guys, I'm sitting at Baker Distributing, where I picked up my puller. Picked up the, uh, where is it? Right here. The ultimate puller. And the ultimate puller, and uh, she got it right off. So now I'm gonna put the new wheel in. Okay, so we got the new wheel in over here at Baker. That way, all I gotta do when I get back is just grab it and go. It definitely took that puller to get it though. So I'm gonna hold on to it. That's the first time I've had to use a puller in two years, but that thing was rusted out bad. You can see the shape of it even after I got it clean. It's still pretty beat up, but the motor's good. All right, guys, I forgot to film sliding it in, but all I did was slide it in, plug it in. All I did was slide the blower in uh, I got both zone dampers wired to the same damper terminal, working off of one thermostat. Uh, we've got airflow upstairs and downstairs. Now we're gonna go outside and check the refrigerant and probably have to put a little bit of gas in it. All right, well, we're throwing a little bit of gas in it. Looks a lot better than what it did. Super heat's coming down. I think it's a piston coil. I'm not mistaken.
That might do it. We'll watch it and see.